Welcome to AEC Stories. This is former SM3 Dempsey of the USS Mount Hood. And today we are doing the international podcast around the world with Robbie Bobby Charles, um, all the way from the Philippines. So where are you at in the Philippines, Robbie? I'm in uh, Iloilo, uh, Philippines. So okay. It's uh, about a 45-minute plane ride from Manila. Wow. So how long have you been living over there? Uh, we're going on our third year. We, I, we've retired here. We retired here, what, 2016? Yeah. So, so what, two years? Up two years now. It's kind of the expat life. I kind of, I fantasize about that type of escapism myself. <laughs> uh, me and my wife, we wanted to do it before we hit the age 50. That was our goal. That was a good plan. I mean, my wife and I have talked about going to live in um, Portugal, which is another you know, like, cool little getaway where it's very affordable, right? Right, um, yeah. But I don't know. I'm still here in California, just enjoying the expensive, expensive, expensive lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, my oldest son, he's in California. He told me how much he pays for rent, and I'm astonished. <laughs> You're like, what? That's 10 months worth of food. No. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> what is your son doing out here? Is he working high tech or something? No, no. My oldest son, uh, he did five years in the Navy and got out, and he went to school for a while. Now he's, uh, he just he works in a restaurant right now. Uh, okay. I think he's a, a prep cook, prep chef, I think he called. He said he, what he's doing. He's still going to school. That's cool. But he's in San, he's that's, in the San Diego area. Uh, that's pretty nice down there. We've Very all expensive. been through there. So what year did you, what year did you join the Navy? I joined in 1985. October of 85 oh. is when I joined. So you joined two years before me. And, oh, okay. uh, now, yeah, I was looking at the pictures you sent me. So you were a signalman too, right? Yeah, I was a, I was a, well, I meant my, my name is actually John Smelter. My son did the Robbie Bobby thing, my little son. I'm also a retired truck driver. He thought that was a funny truck driver name. So. I like it. So now we get your real name, John. <laughs> yeah. So well, my name is actually John. But no, I was okay, a, John. I was an undesignated signalman on my first ship. And then, uh, and then I struck signalman. I mean, I'm dating a seaman on my first ship, and I struck a signalman on my first ship. And I was a signalman all the way up until they closed the radar. So you came in in 85, mm-hmm. and where did, where, did, where did you come from? Where did you grow up? I grew up in Gary, Indiana. Wow, you're my second Indiana podcast in a row. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, Every, okay, well. Everyone wants to run out of Indiana, get it out of the... Ricky Bobby lifestyle of the Indianapolis yeah. 500 and join the Navy. <laughs> there you go. Uh, you're not first, you're last. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> what, what a trip. So <clears throat> what was, what was, um, so you're from Indiana and did you go to Great Lakes or San Diego for boot camp? No, I went to Great Lakes. So it's just a bus trip away. Oh, that's not too bad. No, not at all. Winter time, summertime. Uh, October, so it's starting to become winter. Okay, so you, did you get on the snow watch? I did. I landed there in November going into December. Oh, yes, yeah. the shovel detail and all that stuff. I remember it well. <laughs> yeah, it was a, that was a weird watch. You're only going to get that going to boot camp in Great Lakes yeah. and in the Navy. <laughs> That's, <it>. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, wait a second, what does shoveling snow got to do with a ship? I'm confused. Uh, right? Yeah, they're teaching us so, early. So was your family in the military before you joined, or was this just something you grew up wanting to do? No, I just wanted to get out of Gary. But no, my father, he was in the Army. Nobody was in the Navy. Uh, they, all, my, most of my family is Army. So okay, I, I just wanted to get out of Gary, so I, I joined the Navy. That was it? You're like right out of high school? or Right out of high school. I was 17, did the delayed entry program, and went to boot camp in October. That's pretty nice. Yeah. So, you know, I uh, I grew up on an army base, and I just wanted to not be in the army, so I ended up in the navy. <laughs> yeah, uh, my dad only did one tour in the army. I think we. I'm, I remember being stationed in Fort Benning, Georgia, and I remember being stationed somewhere in Germany. That's it. Oh, and also Maryland, excuse me, and somewhere in Maryland. So, did you you lived overseas too? Before? Just in Germany, but I was, what, five years old, so I don't really, really much remember much about it. Yeah? Yeah. That's that's how that we, we get that in common. I left Germany when I was five. I moved there when I was three. 
Yeah. That's and, then I went to, the, and then I went to Italy. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much the same. I think we left when I was around five as well, and I was a toddler when we got there. So, wow. pretty much the same thing. I remember gummy bears. That's all I remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, you get out, you go into boot camp, you're not sure what you want to strike. Did, did your recruiter tell you, yeah, you could pick whatever you want, just go in as undesignated seaman or what? Well, no, I well, I didn't know what I wanted to become because my ASPAT scores weren't, wasn't that high. So, But then when I was in boot camp, I actually got picked up to be a yeoman. But then our... Okay. But I was supposed to go meet the go to the PSD and at a certain time to go there, and my our what do you call our divisional yeoman didn't tell me what time to be there. I didn't show up and I lost my rating. So, <laughs> I wow, out. it expired at three thirty. No. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, I was really upset about it, but I'm I'm kind of glad I didn't become a yeoman. But that's what the, I got picked up to become. So yeah, well, you know why you're glad you didn't become one because we're signalmen. We know why. There you go. <laughs> so, what was your what was your first ship? My first ship was a St. Louis out of Sasebo, Japan. I was on there from what eighty five until eighty seven. Oh wow! Uh, LKA. That, that place was Sasebo was kind of uh, bland, if I can put it nicely. It was. I didn't I hate liked, it, but I, was I, I liked it. Uh, I didn't really care for Yakuska because I had to wait ninety days on the midway because I was on the midway in Yakuska waiting for my ship to come back. I guess it was on their. I guess I don't know. You don't really call on deployments over there when you're overseas, but it was gone for a while, and I had to wait for it to come back. And then that's when they sent me to St. Louis. So I was on the midway for three months. Waiting for the St. Louis. To oh, they didn't let you sit around. No shore duty for you. Straight to straight to sea, huh? No, nah, they brought me to they brought me to Saspo, and there was no ships there to put me on. So no shore duty waiting. They sent me to Cusco, and I stayed on the midway. They were doing some kind of yard work, or they weren't going anywhere, but they were pier side the whole time. So I got to enjoy. Oh, wow. Enjoy that. <laughs> That's interesting. You must have felt lost. I mean, as a young man coming out of Indiana, getting on a huge. 5,000 plus people ship and not knowing if that's your permanent place. And I'm sure there was a lot of other floaters out there too with you. Like, Oh yeah. Guys is. that were there. TAD, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. There was five right. of us. I think it went over there waiting for our ship. Yeah. It was like, Oh wow. Two of us were seamen and our other three were engineering guys. If I remember correctly, you know, we all got, wow. Uh, yeah. I wasn't, what, a, what an interesting way to go. That's a very unique story. So you like Sasebo once you got there with your ship? Yeah, I love Sasebo because I, I like the quietness. It was it was real nice. I enjoyed it. And plus the crew yeah, in the St. Louis. That's what... Yeah. Good. Oh, I was going to say the the crew in the St. Louis. I I mean I I couldn't. That's still probably my favorite ship I've been on. What was the St. Louis? What kind of ship? It was a LKA. It was an amphibious. Uh, it was a marine transport. It was like a. Um, we picked up uh, marine equipment in their cargo and transported it to the beach. But it was like a big cargo oh, ship. That's cool. It had the big booms on it. We boomed things up on the ship, and and then we boomed things off. It had Mike cool. had Mike six and Mike eight boats on board, and that's how we went to the beach and things. So did you? Uh, were you? A stri- you were striking signalmen on that ship, right? Right. I was in, in. I was in first division, and then I saw the signalman actually getting off at noon every day, and I was kind of jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I love your honesty, my friend. So, because oh, I was working funny. until like eighteen or nineteen hundred, and I'm seeing them leave, and I was like, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to the disco. I'm over here polishing this brass. That's exactly. What the hell? Right. <laughs> well, did you ever get to do any beachmaster work because you're on the amphibious navy? Yeah, uh, did beachmaster work uh, even as a signalman? I was. That's uh, Yeah, that's yeah. that's the rate we can do it with. That's why I asked. Oh yeah, yeah. We we broke broke out the boxes and you know everything like that. It was, it was awesome. So you had to communicate and line up the landings, that kind of stuff for the boats or the best way in, give them intel or something, or how did that work? Uh, yeah, you, we, we had the, the light boxes and then, you know, the light boxes go on the beach and then, you know, you had your certain color coded beaches, if I remember correctly. I mean, I'm older now. I can't remember everything. And, but, you know, do we have, okay. do we had the flags, but yeah, you know, everything broke. And I mean, and, and then you had your, uh, your light, uh, the, the, 
the also the you know the light formations and all that stuff. And then when I when we had our and when because I was uh, I mean I was actually call I was certified to drive the Mike Six boats and the Mike Eight boats, and we always had our signalman on board. And I saw him doing his stuff, and I just thought that was so cool. And that's when I started to go up to the signal bridge and started getting in, interesting on what they were doing. Well, see, I never get to do that, but it always looked really cool. Like Beachmaster, yeah, that's a name I'd like to wear, you know? <laughs> I know you could strike for it, but I didn't, you know, understand, because there were so many varieties, you know, as a signalman, you either end up as a master at arms on a base, uh -huh. or a signalman instructor, recruiter, or, you know, something, I don't know. Yeah. Well, the one <laughs> Somewhere you're going to look sharp, because it was all about that, go on. Yeah. Well, the ones on the beach weren't signalmen, uh, the ones who was actually on the beach, the signalmen were the ones who were on the boats. But there was no okay. there was no signalman on the beach. I mean, there was a, a designated there's a designated position that was called a signalman, but it wasn't you know like a SM type signalman. There's usually on okay. there's not usually an undesignated you know like a seaman recruit seaman that was the one that was on the beach, and the signalman we had were were actually on the boat and on the ship itself. That makes sense. Yeah, so. Yeah, there was a guy that was on my ship. He was a signalman, but he had the Beachmaster rating, and he was working from the shore. So I guess they could change that up. I don't know. Right. Okay. You know, he went to some school, some some combat school, and some other little training. You know, for security perimeter stuff. Right. right? Um. So Sasebo, you guys went out and did drills and landed stuff, and get to have a kind of cool experience there, huh? Yeah, we went to the Philippines a lot, went to Korea a lot, you know, Westpac's were, you know, Australia and I've, ah. Westpac's are much better than, ah. on the East, on the East Coast Navy, you know, I still say that. Yeah. So the, um, let me see. How was Australia? How did that rate as a port? I never get to go there. We were always promised but never delivered. Oh, wow. That's too, yeah. Oh, well, you can't say nothing. The only thing about Australians, the Australian people, they love to drink. And they try to drink you under the table. <laughs> <laughs> so, but now uh, we went to Perth. I've uh, been to Perth, Australia, and Fremantle, and Sydney. And oh, wow. I, Sydney was. So that was. Huh? I was gonna say Sydney was probably the biggest city we've been in over there. Fremantle was really country. That wasn't really much fun. Yeah, uh, I used to joke with my friends. I'm like, you know, there'd be, you know, because I grew up around the military, and there would be women. You know, guys would find their wives in different countries a lot of times in the Navy, right, or even in the Army. Uh -huh. When I lived on the Army base, there'd be guys with wives from Vietnam or Korea if they were stationed in Korea, right? Okay. And Or Italy if they're stationed in Italy, right? Mm -hmm. So in the Navy, we had a lot of women from the Philippines. But I never saw a bunch of Australian girls that were trying to get to the States going, Hello, that's my guy. There he is, coming off Liberty. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> I, never saw that. I never even noticed that, but yeah, you're right. <laughs> right? They're like, no, we're cool. We got Australia, man. Surf's good. Yummy beer. Yeah. See ya. Yeah. Thanks for visiting, sailor. <laughs> I did that. I thought about that the other day. I was going, yeah, yeah, that would have been hilarious. Oh, there's my bloke. He's a bosun's mate. He's quite strappy. <laughs> yeah, it's, I think I got to throw a little comedy in there. But so, where did you go from uh, Japan? Uh, I got when I, I made SM3 on the St. Louis. And then I got stationed on the USNS uh, Mississippi out of Subic Bay. Okay. And I was on there for a year. What year was that? Uh, from 87 until 88. Because uh, then we, could, cause we took the Mississippi. It seems like every ship I've been on, it got scrapped or decomp. So I was on the Mississippi for yeah, same. the same thing for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we took the Mississippi from the Philippines and we rode it all the way to Oakland, California, where it got scrapped. Oh wow! But that was a. So did you get off? Uh, did you get off and uh, get stationed in California from yeah, there? Yeah, uh, because I was on Treasure Island because uh, they sent us to the Sigmund Group because there was only what, a crew of fourteen people on the Mississippi. I mean, we had one SM one, one ET one. OS2, and then the rest of us were Sigma. We had four Sigma men after, uh, besides that, and a couple radio men. And we all got sent to Treasure Island to, for TAD, too. They got us orders. Oh, wow. 
So, yeah, we, we might have passed each other, man. I was uh, drinking beer, running through the barracks on TI. Oh, okay. <laughs> 88. Yeah, we may have run by each other because I was stationed on the Mount Hood in 88. Oh, so you were there during the, so, you were there during uh, 89 as well for the uh, when they had that big earthquake? Earthquake? Yeah. I had, we just departed on Westpac. Um, Everybody was freaking out. They were hearing it over the 1MC like... Nobody knew if their wives were okay or whatever. It sounded like total chaos, you know? That was on Treasure Island when that happened. So was uh, another one of my shipmates. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was yeah. sent security over yeah, there. He was there. He was, he was waiting for our ship. You were security yeah, then? I was security over there until I got orders to my ship. I was, I was on Treasure Island for I don't know how long. How how crazy was that seeing the bridge collapse and all that? Were you on the island at the t- at the I time? I was actually or? in my barracks room, and I've never experienced an earthquake before in my life. Never experienced an earthquake. So I mean, and I was wow. in my room, and I'm trying to figure out what's going on. And then SM1, his name was uh, SM1 Sergeant. I don't know if I'm allowed to say names, but uh, he, he was on the uh, he was in the hallway, just running up and down, freaking out, <laughs> telling every. Oh my! Well, I don't. <laughs> Well, I didn't. I didn't yeah. know what to expect because I never experienced it before. I thought he was going crazy. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's like, "What the hell?" Yeah. So, but then that's when I got you the know? phone call that the report to the security, and then we all after that everything was. And that was during the World Series too, so which was pretty wild. The Bay Area World Series. Yeah, so I was wanting to watch that and listen to that on the radio. Yeah, pretty wild. That was crazy because we we were hearing about it. <clears throat> Weird thing is, I was mess cook and I go, I have a feeling now that we're gone, something's going to happen in San Francisco. And everybody heard me say that, and all of a sudden they're like, "You're psychic!" <laughs> like the next within twelve hours, the earthquake news came okay. out. I haven't predicted any other earthquake since then, so you know, uh, not so not that good at it. Well, I predicted that pretty good. So so you. Know, <laughs> So you were on, uh, uh, how many years were you there on Treasure Island? Uh, it wasn't, not even, on oh, not quite a year. And then I got, that's when I got sent to the Monica, and that's when I got orders to the Mauna Kea. Oh, no, take it, take it, okay. take it back. I got shore duty, see, I got shore duty, I was trying to get shore duty, and I went back to the Philippines. I was in the Philippines for shore duty first. Oh, wow. So I was, uh, I went to NAMAC security in QB Point, and that's where I went shore duty. Yeah, that's where our rate goes, security or the yeah, ship. That's, that's all I did. I <laughs> did 95, 45s, or I was on a ship. But, yeah, I went shore duty, and I was there until actually we closed the base down. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So you've seen the end of everything. Oh, I was there during. You've been through the end of every movie. Yeah, I was there during the <laughs> volcano eruption, too. So, yeah. Uh, You'd like to follow the chaos. I'm telling you. <laughs> in Gary, Indiana, I didn't see anything but hardly nothing. Then I joined the Navy, and I see everything. You're like, hey, man, we got nothing but <laughs> volcanoes, and we got some earthquakes. This Indiana is really boring me. Maybe a tornado one of these days. Uh, I, haven't, <laughs> I haven't experienced one of those yet, knocking on wood here. Uh, you've been lucky. So so you stayed in the Navy. You went from the Mauna Kea. What did you – you picked it up. Or it was coming through on a Westpac while you were in PI, no, I was, and it took you away. No, I, was, I was at the uh, – I, I was in the Philippines until the base closed. At that time, I mean, my, there was me and my wife, and I had... Right after Desert Storm. Right after right, Desert Storm, yeah. right. Because I came through there. I came through there with the Mount oh, Hood. Yeah. And that mag was very... Twice, three or four or five we times. We were very busy during Desert Storm. I remember that well. I mean, that mag was not, not yeah. during Desert Storm. Right. So, but, yeah. But no, I was... Uh, huh? That was uh, some monkeys. I was going to bring that up. What about the monkeys that would throw coconuts at sailors? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking, oh, man. Yeah. I, I, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> there was monkeys. You know the hospital that was up the road, up the hill right? there, right? They would be like pull out like a bunch of like a gang, like they'd drop in the middle of the street and try to throw coconuts at the bus, trying to take people up to Medhold or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then they were like, be careful, dumping your garbage, and the dumpsters close to the trees where they'd come out and just nail you with, like, a professional baseball player level yeah. game, beam you in the head. 
We had so yeah, Navmag. Yeah, that's that's where our ship would pull in the Mount Hood and your future ship as yeah, well. I didn't know it at the time, though. No. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know, right? So you'd gotten married yeah, by then. I was already, when I was at QB Pen, I was already married. And we had two children. Well, I had one child, and then after Mount Pinatubo, I mean, yeah, Mount Pinatubo, we had our second child. I got married when I was on the Mississippi. <laughs> Wow. Uh, we got married in 1980. Well, no, when I left the Miss Payne and I was in Treasure Island, because we got married in October of 89, right after the earthquake. Right oh, wow. after the uh, earthquake. Yeah. You've had a very, you're like a James Bond life of action, my <sighs> man. You're like in the middle of earthquakes and <laughs> volcanoes and war bases and security. It's, it's a good story. That's why I get to have sea stories. Oh, there man. you go. You know, we, we get to dig. You know, the best, my great sea story is hi- hiding all the way in the Philippines. All the guys call me on here. They're like, hey, man, I love the Philippines. I wish I could go back. And they're living in Indiana right now. Oh, <laughs> no, I can't go back. I try. How you uh, like that? How you like yeah, that? I avoid Indiana. <laughs> even, even when I go visit my son in Chicago, I still avoid Indiana. <laughs> wow, man. What a trip. So, yeah, I, you know, one of my one of my shipmates is still there, but. He was a radio man, and you can listen to my last podcast. He's on that one, Greg. Yeah, I, but we came through PI. We we lived there. We were our ship, the Mount Hood, was uh, dry dock there in the Philippines. Be in oh. yeah, in like eighty nine wow. ninety. Our rudder oh, okay. broke. Wow. Before Desert Storm, that would have been my second Westpac, but it was a Warpac uh-huh. Westpac. <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah, and then we came through PI, loaded up some more after hitting Guam, and then headed out to the Persian Gulf. Wow. So you you were there. On the base, and then you caught the Mauna Kea. Why? Because it was the last ship coming through. No, I, we closed the base down because I mean, because the base was. I mean, I was the last. I, the security and medical. We were the last hundred people to actually be on the base. Uh, my wife and my two wow. children. They already flew them stateside. They're actually staying with my mother in Indiana. And then uh, I got orders because they cut us all orders. You know, they actually flew. Uh, how would you? I don't know, I forgot what they call it. What they call them. Detailers, actually. This was 91, yeah, this right? This is uh, right when the base was closing. They actually flew detailers to the Philippines, and we actually had a one-on-one kind of, It wasn't on the, over the phone. It was actually talking to them in person. And then uh, they sold me uh, the Mauna Kea yeah. in California, which I don't know why, but uh, that's the orders I took. So we went to – I got orders to California. And I got to California first, and then flew my wife and my two sons at the time over there next. And that's we was at the Mauna Kea, and that's but that was uh, and, uh, and that was in uh, we lived in Alameda, California. Time. Okay, so was the Mauna Kea out of there, or was the Mauna Kea out of uh, Concord? Well, the Mauna Kea was supposed to be out of Concord, but the captain lived in Mare Island, so the ship spent most of his time up there. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't like the commute. Let me drive the work there to my house. We spent a lot it. of time in Maryland. <laughs> But you like you liked it over by uh, Alameda better. Well, the that's, base and the no, that's there. the housing. The only only housing they had available. So. Oh yeah, they had just built newer housing. Those like two story yeah, things. We lived off base. Yeah, yeah we lived the off base housing there is right outside the gate. Yeah, right, right, right outside the gate. I go by those when I go check out the Hornet that's oh, over okay, there. Okay, yeah, know? that's. I still oh, live. Oh, here. you still you live out there. Yeah, I still live in I live in Dublin, which is over the hill, about twenty minutes from Alameda, twenty five oh, wow. minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. We live right outside the gate there. I'm right on. The, as soon as you go out the gate, you a little bit of drive, and on the left hand side, the housing there. I know. I know exactly where you were. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a trip. That place is all shut down, but like so is Subic. Yeah. And uh, I was just instant messaging my bosun. Huh. My bosun that was on our ship, he was just got back from PI. He has a house oh, there okay. too, kind of near along a, yeah. So uh, yeah, so you went, and this is a good long journey. So you're now on the Mauna Kea. You're living in Alameda. Uh-huh. What do you do? Westpac out from there? Uh, we did. Uh, we went to Panama, I think, for a while. I, we didn't really do any Westpac. We was always gone doing something, but it didn't seem like it just seemed like confused chaos. I can't really remember quite well, but we we're always out. <laughs> so, but yeah. we didn't, but we didn't really go overseas that much. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. You kind of skimmed the skimmed the rim of uh, the Pacific, pretty much. <laughs> if that's what I remember, yeah, because we I remember going to Panama, and that was pretty much it. 
I think that's the only thing we did overseas. Wow. And we, we went to Panama, I think, wow. two or three times, if I remember correctly. <laughs> that's yeah, interesting. But I don't remember going, going overseas at all. Kilo. I'm oh, sorry, it's my dog. Okay. So, um, let me see. So, from the Mauna Kea, you end up on the yeah, Mount Hood? the Mauna Kea got decommed in 95, if I remember the year right. So, was the... Was the Mount Hood up north yet, or were they in they Concord? They were in Concord. So we just, so we okay. just, uh, I just did a cross deck over to the Mount Hood. And then that's when I, when I was on board, I got on board there. I was an SM2. I made SM2 on the, uh, on the Mauna Kea. And then I got on board as SM2 yeah. on the Mount Hood. And when I got there, there was one SM1, uh, the Filipino guy. And then the rest were all women. So. What a trip. Was, I, I, the Charlie's Angels, the Charlie's Angels of Signal. I've never, I never seen so many people try to strike Signal in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Were they, you know, I'm not trying to be sexist or anything or insult anybody, but geez, did you have like the talent pool up there or what? <laughs> <laughs> According to what the rest of the ship thought, you were married, yeah. of course, but I mean. Well, I was like yeah. the foggy father figure, and then there's SM, SM1. He was, he was a funny guy, but. He didn't really stay in the figure bridge that much. But no, a lot of people are trying to strike signalmen to the flirt with the young ladies, I guess you could say. Well, how many women did you have on the Mount Hood by we then? Had, I always get along with the female shipmates. We were there when they first came on, halfway through my okay, tour. Okay, SM1, going. myself, and then I think there's what? Um, four, four, four girls, four women. Four female signal yeah. women. And then Very cool. myself and an SM1. That was it. Yeah. Wow. And there was, but I mean, how many women were on the on the on the ship now? Because we only had fifty on the when ship I first itself? when we first brought them on. Oh, yeah. I don't know. It was it was quite a bit. I mean, the signal bridge. I mean, I think we had the biggest, I guess, ratio difference than any other department because we're so small. Because I know the because the QM. Because right. I guess I don't know if when you were on board, you were part of the navigation department. Is that how it worked when you were there? Um, I was mainly ops, okay. mainly ops, and we we worked with the bridge and all that, but we were with the radio men and okay, all those yeah. Guys. When I was on Go the Mauna Kea, we were ops department, and when I got to the Mount, Mount Hood, we were navigation department, which was something new to me. So I never, it was just us in the QM, which I never experienced that before. So I didn't know if that's how it was when you were there, right? Well, was your was your birthing on the same level as the uh, Mestex? Oh, uh, yeah. Asking a question, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Did you go out of your room, out of the front door, and right into the Mestex? <laughs> uh, I think. So. Down the I think so. Right. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because that was the old ops birthing. So, was it just were you in the same birthing as ops? Ops and. Yeah, we was no, we we had mixed birthing. I mean, but we were part of navigation department. It was just us and the QMs. That's who we mustered with. But, but when you're when you're thinking about when you're talking about it now, and our birthing was like we had RMs in there and OSs and and us. What? A, yeah, ETs right. and EWs, right. right? Yeah, that's I, it's so crazy. So, you know what's so cool about talking to you is that that signal bridge. I loved it. It was one of the probably the nicer ones out there in the fleet because I've been on carrier ones and it had a lot of space yeah, to measure it to the size of the right. ship, right? And, and and some ships you would be on and there would be like a little tiny phone booth, yeah. right? Be like, here's a phone booth and an easel. Yeah, that's where it was in <laughs> St. Louis. It was very small. Right. D- double up on your pea coats, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing, but did you ever crash out on that bench that was up there, that green bench, the Naga Hyde bench? The green bench. Uh, on the I'm signal thinking. bridge, near the bulkhead. <clears throat> we had those metal chairs up on oh, those desks yeah, yeah, up yeah, there, yeah, right? yeah, that's right, 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 okay. So you're, you're not going to dust yeah. off my brain here. I got no. you, buddy. So, um, well, it's funny because... I just got back. I was in Kansas and I visited uh, SM3 uh-huh. Aiken, who was on the Mount Hood during Vietnam. Really? Wow, that'd be interesting. And he had me come out and stay with him. Yeah. Oh. I think he was on in 74. Huh. And he had me um, come out and stay with him in Kansas. He had a big, beautiful house and we just made a great friendship. So I'm connecting with the people that shared that wow. space. That's why it's 
significant to me, right? <laughs> We're kind of like a okay. family that we all hung out in that tower, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. And, um, you know, my signalman friends that I was signalman with were all pretty tight. I talked to my SM2, you know, my other buddies are sheriff, other SM2s down south. You know, we all kind of oh, stay in touch. Cool. You know? Yeah. You know, I guess it's just something about that era, yeah. but that's a, that's a trip. So you were on the Mount Hood for how many years? And did they go up to Washington while you were on it or stay? No, in I did go up to Washington. That's actually where we actually picked up our chief. Uh, he, he was, he lived up in Washington state and then we picked him up there and then okay. uh, he was a geographic bachelor pretty much on the Mount Hood. And I only got to work with him for maybe like okay. three, three months or so. And then that's when I got off. Oh. Okay. Never really get to know no, the guy, huh? <laughs> I was already, I already was pretty much getting getting ready to leave when he he got on board. Uh, but, okay, uh, so some of my former former Mount Hood shipmates were working up in Washington when you came up there. One of my bosun's mates, and um, well, the Mount Hood was decommissioning around that time, right? When I no, I, I when I left, it wasn't decommed. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I did a podcast with a guy that decommed oh, okay. it later. He was on there for like a year, and I went to AOE right next door. Um, and they were running light, like one third the crew, doing massive oh, unrest. Well, I can imagine that. Wow. <laughs> huh. Right. So Washington must have been a trip. I mean, was that a big change climate wise coming from? Well, no, we didn't. I didn't get stationed up in Washington. We went up to Washington, but no, we were still in Concord when I was there. Yeah. Oh, so I, we get went it. Up to, I get it. I mean, we went to Washington. Is the road the roads? Rose Bowl, that, is that up in Washington? Rose Parade or yeah. something like that. The, I know the Oregon had the down, down Jazz Festival. We went to Mount Hood for that. The Rose, Rose Parade? I thought that was in Washington. But no, we went up to Washington State, and then that's, but we didn't go station there. We just went up there a couple of times, and that's where we picked up our SMC. But no, it was still in, it was still in okay. Concord when I left. So what year was that then when you oh, left the hood? Oh, Lord, how are you going to ask? Uh, I... You're a career man. I, I get guys that are in for four years. Oh, easy. Okay. <laughs> you get legs, <laughs> homie. <laughs> I left the Mount Hood and I went to, uh, I want to say, Great Lakes, Illinois, Station Shore Duty Security. Yes. Again. So I only did short, I, Again, back yeah, to I did short duty only twice. Once in Subic and, and, and once in Great Lakes. And I was in Great Lakes for three years. So I want to say, uh, I can't remember. It was in the wow. 90s. I can't remember when. <laughs> so, yeah. And then I went from Great Lakes to Little Creek, yeah. Virginia. And then I went to Little Creek, Virginia. And I was there for my last four years, and that's where I retired. What a trip. So, it's not too bad. And that's where I actually went from <laughs> Signalman to Bosonate. Was in Little Creek because that's where they closed the rate out. What was that a trip seeing your rate get yeah, shut down? And I made the wrong choice because they told us all us signalmen we have a choice either go QM or BM. And at that time I was still an SM2, and then uh, I figured I'd go BM because I had the BM experience from years back. And then everybody who went QM when they went and took the first class exam it was one hundred percent advancement. So I was bummed out. Oh, I get P and A a bunch oh, of times. But yeah, but the people, everybody who went QM from SM to QM, the QM rating at that time for QM one was one hundred percent advancement. And oh, I was a SM went BM, and yeah. I was still a BM two. Oh, yeah, I was not a happy individual at that time because I still didn't make BM one. I made BM one just uh, just right before, or was it six months before I retired? So yeah, wow. so I was not. Well, I think you would have you would have made rank better if you had been <clears throat> on a consistent linear path. But you were bouncing around the world, man. You were seeing the world doing stuff. And when you get all that security time, you can't work in your signalman rate. Get your flashing light and semaphore and flag oh, bag yeah. work yeah. up, right? I mean, right? It's like okay, <laughs> it was fun. You gotta. Those are skills you have to keep tuned oh, up. Yeah, and I noticed that when I went back I mean, to look at yeoman up hard. I'm sorry. Yeoman on anywhere. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm yeomaning on shore duty. I'm yeomaning out at sea. I'm yeomaning. Give me a ring. 
<laughs> I'm Y and C in no time, baby. What are you there guys you complaining go. about? Well, there's no flashing lights at the hospital <laughs> like that station right. had, right? Yeah, my the end of my tour, I get in a motorcycle wreck. I was stuck in Oakland for oh, a year. Wow. It was hell. I was working in a mail room. I did not like it. I wanted to go back to sea. I thought I hated the sea. I missed it instantly. That's a long time. I love yeah. the ocean. So you retired? You retired yeah, from the Navy? Yeah, 2005 I retired. I uh, 20 years. Wow. So you were, you were on the signal bridge four years after me. Uh, no, three years. Three years yeah. after. I, I guess so. Oh, my God. Kilo. What is the dog saying? <laughs> this is on the podcast. What was the dog saying, sir? <laughs> chasing him with a pillow. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Hey, at least this is. At least we got a, a, a clear sounding podcast from the Philippines. Oh, no, I'm, I'm amazed it's working. I don't. I don't worry about too much. You know, I'm like, hey, let me get the damn story that nobody else got, right? <laughs> yeah, my wife's not a friend with her. She's still mad about yeah, these well. dogs from Chicago to here, so. <laughs> their tickets they're out there like their tickets co- their tickets cost more than mine did so did you get into the civilian world before moving out to yeah, the Philippines yeah I was a truck driver for from 2005 until 2015 oh, was that 10 years yeah and that's why yeah. my son made the little Robbie Bobby thing he thought that was humorous yeah I did I, had truck, I was an over the road truck driver for 10 years so. oh wow that's what yeah. happens. So you get your you get yeah. your military pay, move to PI, live like a king, yeah, right? That's what, I mean, that's like the way to do wife, it. We decided once we because she got my wife got in a real bad accident in Great Lakes when we we're stationed when we we're actually stationed there. So she was disabled for oh my lord over a year. So oh, I mean, she, we she had to learn how to walk and everything all over again. So now she's getting she, now we got her wow. disability so we're on her disability and my retirement here. Wow. So you guys are just, you guys are out there and what would you say the cost of living difference is moving from the States to PI, like percentage wise? Uh, it depends on how you want to live. Uh, if you want to live Western lifestyle, it's actually costs more. Uh, the electronics, the electronics okay. cost more here than they do in the States. Uh, uh, okay. If, if you buy a brand, well, the brand new vehicles are about the same. But, uh, but, but utility wise, yeah. like why you took my electric bill here, like we got a, our house is a five bedroom, three bath house. And my electric bill last month was, I want to say, is it 2,000 pesos? So that's, uh, yeah. I'm trying to put that in dollar amount. It's 50 pesos, 53 pesos, a dollar. So what's that, like 20 bucks? Come on. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. No. Not bad. The water, our water bill, uh, 400 pesos. It's a yeah, fraction. Our water bills. Oh it's yeah. A fraction. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, the, the utilities are a lot cheaper. I mean, I got cable. I mean, I got the cable here. I pay a thousand pesos a month, which is nothing compared. My my son really? told me he pays what eighty dollars a month, eighty seven dollars a month. Wow. Back in Chicago. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> what a trip. Uh, yeah, the electronics are worldwide, so you could watch Netflix yeah. anywhere. You can be in Kershlakistan. Kersh- that doesn't even exist, but I'm making it up. But still, if such a place existed, you could watch Netflix yeah. there in uh, Antarctica. <laughs> we get what they call load, load here so on the TV. So different load amounts is different amounts. So you get different type okay. of channels. So I get uh, 1,000 a month load, and I get the Discovery, the History, the American Sports Channel. And it's not bad. Yeah, That's I just got to cool. wait for the hour because I'm a big Cubs fan. So I have to, if I want to watch a live, a live Cubs game, I have to adjust the hours. That's all. So do you, um, do you, um, run into any other expats while you're there? Uh, pretty much. Oh, the gentleman behind me from Scotland. I got, uh, two gentlemen who live across the way from me. They're from Germany. So, but I haven't ran across too many Americans. No. I've only probably come across one American. He lives maybe, four blocks from me but he's uh he don't really go out that much and i guess he's a retired uh he's from the bay area as well i guess he's retired not military but a retired government uh government worker or something i think you're saying 
Oh, like right. a GS, a GS eleven yeah, or fifteen. Like or but he said he has never been in the military. He's here <clears> with his wife. So, but no, I, I pretty much stay in the house wow. and stay out of trouble. That's cool. Yeah, man, I, I that was uh, pretty cool that you shared that story with me. People like all my listeners, like, wow. So, what would it be like if I moved back to PI? Oh. Well, it's not the PI of your youth. It is just it's the it. PI yeah. as a country. And, yeah, that's why we right? went. We came to Ely and, just for because Ely is more family oriented. Subic still, I guess, if you want to go out and go out to the clubs, I guess that still exists. I'm not sure, but that's what people tell me. It's not so much like that here. Well, I would figure, like, you were in the base when Subic was closing. You must have watched, you know, everything over McSyside just start, start, just start dimming, down. right? Yeah. Like, the thing is, we, we – Like, all the clubs, like, the lights going out, you know, like, hey, it's well, over. We, re- we rebuilt right? everything out in town thinking it was going to stay open. <laughs> so, so, oh, my yeah, gosh. We were you one of those guys that was going to open your own restaurant or hotel out downtown at one time? I mean, I know I thought nah. about it. You know, I lived there for a few months and lived off base, and I liked it, and – I was a hustler, so I go along with all the owners and shit. But that was my thing. (laughs) (laughs) It suited me. I was a military brat. I understood. You know what I mean? (laughs) But uh, no, I mean, I'm I'm happy being back in California. This is where I always wanted to live. I want to move every time I get every time I look at the gas for four dollars a gallon or rent for twenty five hundred a month for one bedroom. You want to leave, well, but uh, you know he's paying eighteen hundred a month just for a bedroom in somebody's house. In California, so yeah, he must be I living don't know by where the beach. Boy's living, but when he told me how much he's paying for a month monthly rent for a bedroom in somebody's house, I was like, I don't think I can afford California. Oh you know, my goodness! My, so the signal, the the, the Mount Hood signalman that you serve with, do you remember any of their uh, names? I remember SM One Rudy. That was the Filipino. Uh, SM3, he probably made, I think he made SM1. Do you remember any of the names of the girls and guys I worked with on the Mount Hood, huh? Or my wife saying first names. <laughs> 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 yeah, I yeah. honestly can't. I remember I came across right before I retired in Little Creek, I came across one of the girls and she was an NC1. She made NC1. Yeah, she was not oh, an yeah? SM no more. Uh, real nice. She was one of the nicest girls on the, I mean, she was real quiet, real laid back when she's on the, on the Mount Hood. And I was surprised. I was real happy to see that she made NC1. <laughs> but I wish I could think of names, but I honestly That's can't cool. remember any names. I'm sorry. I talked to a, a signalman that was on the USS uh-huh. Stark. Oh. When it got wow. hit by the missile. Yeah. He got out as an intelligence specialist. He went from signalman to intelligence. So now he works at the Pentagon. So he was on the strike huh? when that missile struck there? Oh, yeah. Listen to my wow, podcast. You'll hear it. That's something else. Yeah. There's, if you, I get like 50-something, 50, 50 50-something 50 episodes. If anything, along with your Cubs games, I totally advise the Mounted oh, Podcast. <laughs> I got some great stories. They're, I didn't write yeah, them all. They lived yeah, them all. You know what I mean? Wow. Even like yours. Yeah. So he's over there, and, you know, he's a good guy. We, had, we we talked, and it's like, I get a lot of signalmen on the podcast, but I also try to get other rates to keep it interesting because it can't just be signalmen. People want to know what a right, snipe right. did or, you know, the cook that, you know, I had a cook from a battleship. He huh. was cool as hell. So there's like 50-something episodes on there, yeah. But, uh, man, I really appreciate you coming on. That was a really interesting podcast, and to get that, to talk to a fellow signalman from my ship All right, from the cool. Philippines. Thank you. We are the one and only international podcasters. The Mount Hood Signalmen have done done this like nobody else. <laughs> the flashing light has gone from California go. to the PI. You know, I can tell you that we're the only guys in the world that have ever done this podcast from here to oh, there. That's okay. So if you ever, anyone asks if you ever did any great achievements, say, shit, man, I did a podcast once with a signalman that was there on the go. show before me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that'll matter to him, but hey, right. it sounds cool. <laughs> So, um, listen, um, anybody listening to AEC stories, like us, love us, give us your uh, recommendations, follow us on podbean.com, and follow us on Facebook. And um, now that I'm going to stop the recording, what, what you got to do is you got to let it upload. It's going to upload into the cloud. 
because it, it takes your recording from your computer and mine and okay. it merges them. So it might take about 10 or 12 minutes. So I'm going to hit the stop. But I didn't, before I hit it, it's, it gets all garbled when it does that. And you'd be going, what are you saying? Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Have you, have you heard any yeah, of the episodes? Like yet? Three, of, three of them You've already. Seen the page. I, like the one that with the radio one, listened to that one already. And I listened to one, I, I believe the one is yeah. an older gentleman. I think the one you talk about during the Vietnam one, but I actually listened to that one as well. Yeah, I get signalmen that were hanging out with John Wayne, man, when he See, was making be, the movie. That'd be cool. In harm's way. Yeah. See, the signalmen are badass. We <laughs> own the go. airwaves. That's <laughs> how it is. That's there what the signalmen, you know? You don't see any, any, a bunch of Navy cooks starting a <laughs> podcast. We're going to talk about culinary delights made on the mess deck. Today's chili well, I got corrected <laughs> by my youngest son about the cook already. He's still in the Navy in, uh, in Virginia. And I told him, I didn't know they're not called MS, MSs no more. So, uh, what are they called now? C- culinary C-S, specialists? C-S, 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 or C-S. something? I did not know that. Wow. So. It's a different, it's a different Navy. They've got, you know, Skype and everything. They can listen to my podcast out at sea. <laughs> They don't know what it was like in the pre cell phone Navy living in a jungle. You know? <laughs> they don't know nothing about that. What was that island that we used to go to right on the base there? The, that was right well, out, was Subic? it Grande Island? Right off the, Subic, the base yeah, of Grande Island. It's still yeah. open. There's a hotel there. Yeah. I love that nice place, place, man. Go there, get some cheap military food and just. In the night when it was cooling yeah. down, it was beautiful. I mean, I, people tell me I haven't been there yet. I mean, why am I planning on taking a vacation there soon? We got friends that's retired there. They say it's uh, you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. It's cleaned up a lot, so they say you're either going to love it or hate it there. I saw some pictures that started looking like uh, downtown Las Vegas. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, it's, the gentrification is traveling around the world, right? New stores, new stuff. Consume, yeah, consume, they, consume. I mean, there's malls on every right? corner. In the, Phil- the Philippines are still stuck in the 80s when it comes to malls. So, I mean, there's there's malls yeah. everywhere here. And the same thing in Subic. As soon as you go out the gate, I guess there's a huge SM mall right outside the gate there. And, uh, wow. That's where you can buy yourself a nice fanny pack. <laughs> that's for sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I remember having one of those leather fanny packs. That's all I remember. 